Hey, so uh, I've just come across an interesting video um, and it is addressing the subject of why, why it is in the West, well, probably across the world in general, Nazism remains far more taboo or far more synonymous with evil, pure evil, than communism. And it's addressing uh, a number of the points here. Now, the video is from Prager University. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Um, I'm well aware that Prager University is not without flaws. It's not an actual university. It's uh, It was founded by um, Dennis Prager, who's associated with the Christian right. It's certainly a right-wing source. There's no question about that. It's definitely, it doesn't pretend anything else. It doesn't pretend that it's... It's neutral. It is a right-wing source. Um, it's not a real university. It's more like a sort of, I guess you could say, a conservative think tank. Um, and I, just as a disclaimer, I certainly wouldn't endorse all their positions and the things that they've argued. For example, I uh, would strongly disagree with them on the minimum wage. Um, and I happen to believe that gun regulation in America is incredibly sensible. But um, nevertheless, I think they also raise some important points about identity politics and um, this, which is uh, presented by Dennis Prager himself. Why is it that Nazism is considered far more synonymous with evil than communism by the average person? Now, it's not that communism is, uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily mainstream. Um, in Western countries, I mean, you know, very few people are going to vote communists. It's not like that. But it is true that Nazism still elicits far more um, connotations with evil. Um, I'm going to very quickly sort of run down the basic points um, of what he addressed, and I think these are very valid as to why Nazism gets more attention. Um, and this is perhaps not in the same order that he presented them, but one such issue is the fact that with communism, um, there is a t tendency for communist states to hide their past in a way that Germany has not. A colleague of mine actually um, recently commended the way that Germany has admitted its past, and I was so tempted to say, oh, it's a pity China doesn't do that, but I, perhaps I'm a card, perhaps I should have brought that up, but um, I didn't. Um, China's a glaring example. Chairman Mao's crimes are still in 2018, dismissed as mere mistakes. And that is about as far as the Communist Party will go. They'll say, oh, we made a few mistakes. And yet there's a real paradox in this because he had absolute power. So you can't have it both ways. Just, you can't say he was given bad advice. He was, you know, I think the Gang of Four were kind of scapegoated for Mao's brutality and Mao's um, total lack of empathy for human beings. Um, Mao Zedong was a very evil man, no question about it. So it is a grotesque um, situation that this man is still, if not venerated, at least downplayed in this country today. And I think China will only truly move forward when they fully accept this man's um, crimes against the Chinese people. And that brings me to another point as to why I think communist regimes get downplayed compared to Nazism. Communists tend to kill their own people quote-unquote. Um, the most vicious examples of communism the victims have been within that country. So we think of Mao's China, we think of Stalin's Russia, um, although the Holodomor in Ukraine would be an exception to that because that's very much an attack on the Ukrainian people and one of the worst atrocities in human history. Um, but in, in most cases, in almost every case, Communist successes are within that country. North Vietnam would be another example. Um, North Korea, Cambodia, and the Red Terror in Ethiopia, which is one of the most overlooked of all. Um, Castro's Cuba. I mean, Castro is a good example. Even when that tyrant passed away two years ago, the left were lining up to praise him, which I found rather sickening, to be quite honest. Um, so the world generally is going to respond to aggressors more than those who've brutalized their own people. The Third Reich, 
um, invaded other countries. It tried to conquer Europe. And most of the worst concentration camps and death camps were in occupied Poland. Um, at this point, I want to make a disclaimer. Um, there are some critics of communism and there are some of those. There are people online who come out with such bile like we fought the wrong enemy in World War Two and other such nonsense. Just for the record, and I believe this is the position that Dennis Prager, Prager has as well. Um, Nazism is grotesque. What the Third Reich done was pure evil. And I, I find it disgusting that there are people who still come online and try to deny that it happened and try to um, try to exonerate Hitler, basically. Um, and the other Nazis, I think that is grotesque. But I also think that it is very widely documented. I mean, there have been dozens of films about the Holocaust, um, many, many books, a countless number of books, documentaries, archives, you name it, um, documenting the crimes of the Third Reich. And that is a good thing because it should never, ever be forgotten what they had done. It was pure evil. As Dennis Prager pointed out, probably it was the most systematic example of totalitarianism ever in terms of not in terms of overall mortality, um, Mao and Stalin killed far more than Hitler in terms of direct victims. That is, if you take away the, the victims of the European theatre of World War II from Hitler and focus just on the Holocaust and his treatment of POWs and so on. Um, communists definitely killed a lot more. So in terms of pure mortality, communism is far higher. But in terms of something that is explicitly, uh, brutally, candidly evil um yeah the holocaust probably is the worst example therefore it's going to naturally get a lot more attention germany has fully fully acknowledged it in a way that um communist states have not done um you know russia has really not fully accepted stalin's crimes people have been re rehabilitated but lenin statues are still around the place uh, as for china it has to be the most dishonest country in the world when it comes to accepting its past. It's very good at uh, talking about what the Japanese done, and they've done terrible things. It's very good about uh, reminding people of the century of humiliation and exploitation by European powers. But when it comes to Mao's excesses, you know, the, the numbers that Mao killed, and Mao's policies killed, dwarf every outside attack on China, including Japan. I mean, put it this way, it's estimated around 10 million civili Chinese civilians died in World War II, um, probably the majority of them from Japanese atrocities. Mao killed up to 70 million people in his tenure, but it just isn't remembered, or at least it's exonerated. And I want to particularly focus on China because I do think it's the worst example. I think even Russia has somewhat been a little bit more honest than China has in terms of its past. Um, and one reason for that, of course, is perestroika. Russia did open up. The Communist Party isn't in control anymore. And I'm no fan of the Putin regime, but the communists not, are not in charge. In China, they still are. They still are. So that's very important because when you have a party that controls everything, every source of information, every media outlet, every school textbook, they can control that. So they exonerate Mao, Mao's crimes, which is a bit ironic because he went against the party, he turned the party on its head. Um, yet they want to protect his reputation because if they really were candid about just how excessive his brutality was and the cruelties of the Cultural Revolution, then I think they would know that their ideological legitimacy would just go down the pan. In fact, today, although they try to brainwash people with it, they focus more on the jingoism and the nationalism than actual communist party ideology um so you can't escape it in this country it's everywhere it's absolutely everywhere i've seen intelligent reasonable people buy into this and it, it's tragic it's frustrating and it's tragic and as an outsider there's very little you can do you can you know you can sort of talk back and get into an argument but what good's that going to do you're just going to be dismissed as a foreigner who's interfering so that is the situation in communist countries it is so powerful that level of indoctrination is, it's so powerful. Um, and it's tragic because people have a right to know their past. 
the director, Jiang Yimou, made a film, um, To Live, and a large part of it focused on the Cultural Revolution. Um, it was a brave film. It was quite candid, actually. It showed struggle sessions. It showed, I'm not going to give the whole synopsis of the film. It's a good film. You can find it on YouTube. That was blocked for years in China. It only got released, I believe, four years after that. Um, and Zhang Yimou uh, found it difficult to, to do his work for some time afterwards. Um, why do we not see many films? Why do not we not see any Hollywood films on the Cultural Revolution? Could it be because the Chinese government would have a tantrum? Um, there are brief references, for example, in The Last Emperor and some other things, but why do we not see films about Stalin's purges? Why do we not see films about the Holodomor? And I'm not, I'm, there may be films in Ukraine, I'm talking about films that really show communism for what it is. And it's bloody, horrendous, cruel, dishonest, deceptive past. Um... So the exoneration of communism is very apparent. Now, in communist states like China, it's not surprising. But what's particularly galling is when you get this in the West, where there is access to information, where there is access to different opinions. So what's the reason for that? Well, I think he was right to point out that there is an enormous left-wing um, dominance of academia. We have the same situation in the UK. Um, left-wing influence is profound. So students, university students are taught to believe everything British is evil um, and any opposing force must have felt they must have been struggling against colonialism. I mean, I could talk for a long time about a lot of the hypocrisies here. Take, for example, the fact that one of the worst acts of racial violence in modern times was the Rwandan genocide. It was Hutus killing Tutsis on the grounds of racial hatred. One million people dead, or close to one million, and yet it's it's really not given the sort of um, it's not shunned in the same way. It's not it's just not seen on the scale that it is, in my opinion. Um, compared to, for example, the media attention given to say if a white officer kills a young black man. Now, I'm not saying there aren't legitimate issues around that, but. It's just one example of the many hypocrisies that the left, left-wing dogma promotes. Um, identifying with the centre, I think it's just obvious. It's not, it's not a case of this having to be a competition. It's a case of what is just the plain truth. And of course, there are a few Reds coming on to this video and saying, not American propaganda, but this is... You know, take America out of it. You can you'll find plenty of critics of communism in Britain and and indeed in former uh, states who lived under communism. People who knew what this was like in Eastern Europe. Um, take the Vietnam War. That's another example. Virtually every film made about the Vietnam War is fiercely anti-war, and it shows the uh, Americans as brutal thugs who just go into Vietnamese villages and torch them. Um, and that happened. I'm not downplaying, you know, events like my lie. But how much attention is that given compared to, for example, the 6,000 civilians killed at Hue City, 1968? North Vietnam, well, Vietnam, of course, unified Vietnam today, is run by the Communist Party. They don't admit their past. So the whole narrative of the Vietnam War is uh, the greedy American colonials came in and they were evil and they've done terrible things, and some things they've done were terrible, you know. Um, I would I would take issue with American conservatives who want to downplay that, but it's this, it's this mantra of only looking at one side. Um, and there simply isn't enough coverage of communist crimes. There is a general ignorance. I think most people would sort of think, oh yeah, communism, that's a bad thing, but they wouldn't have the same visceral image as you would from the Third Reich, you know, liberated concentration camps and so on. Incidentally, I think it's good that there is documentation of it. I think it's good that there are films made. Um, I mean, over six million people killed Jews, Slavs, Gypsies, um, gay people, communists. Um, it was a hideous, hideous chapter in human history. And uh, I think World War II was morally justified in taking on the scourge of German and Italian fascism and uh, Japanese imperialism. But 
I think uh, I've seen calls for some sort of museum to open to um, pay testament to the victims of communism. I think that's a very good idea. There needs to be more awareness. There needs to be more of um, an acceptance of what communist totalitarianism was. Now, communist apologists tend to defend totalitarian regimes. They'll say, oh, but Stalin wasn't really a communist. Mao wasn't really a communist. But they fail to recognize this is where ideological communism ended up. This was the end result. There has never been an example that I can think of of a communist state that didn't persecute dissent. I can't think of a single example. So communism is arguably the most blood-drenched ideology in modern history. Fascism was blood-drenched and it was vicious and it was brutal and it was evil. But I would argue over a much shorter period of time, um, if we look at uh, Mussolini's Italy to the fall of Nazi Germany, we're talking about about 20 years. Um, compare that to communism, 1918 ongoing if we consider china um it's ongoing and it isn't quite the level ideologically as it was in the cold war but make no mistake um communist parties still have an iron grip on their populations today that's certainly the case in china uh i imagine it's the case in vietnam i plan to go there next year um so it's a massive distortion of history now there are uh certain nazi apologists there are neo-nazis out there who, who hate communism, they would use this to kind of promote Nazism. Make no mistake about it. And no one should un misunderstand my position. I think both are evil. Um, and I think people who deny the Holocaust and those, I think neo-Nazis are traitors because they are representing an ideology that we fought against, that our ancestors died for. So, you know, I am absolutely not in the same camp as those people. Um... One more point, you know, people coming on the videos like that and saying, oh, it's American propaganda. What about this? What about that? Well, that's easy to answer. That's easy to address. You can take any wrong that the West has done, be it the persecution of black Americans or Native Americans, um, be it the crimes of the British Empire. You can say what you want. The fact of the matter is you can go into any British library and freely find information about that. You can see films about it. Look at Gandhi. You know, it was a very successful film. It showed the wrongs of the British Empire. There are statues to Gandhi in the United Kingdom, for goodness sake. Um, in America, you know, American society has went through a complete... Um, it's not to say... I'm not saying there isn't racial tensions today. But what I would strongly argue is there's no comparison. Because whereas Western society does look at itself, um, communist societies simply don't. They just don't. They deny it. Um, so there's no comparison. It's not to say that there has never been injustices committed by democratic capitalists, whatever you want to call it, powers, by Western powers, there has. And I would never, ever downplay those things. But my point is they're already very widely documented and discussed. The left, shamefully, continued to downplay communism. John McDonnell, the shadow chancellor of the Exchequer, who, if his leader gets into number 10, would be the second most powerful man in the country, is a Stalin apologist as is Seamus Milne, Jeremy Corbyn's advisor. These are the people who could be running Britain, and they're basically Stalin apologists. Uh, Corbyn himself, the second that Castro died, he was gushing in praise. Never mind the prisons for dissidents, never mind the persecution of gay people. You know, this is the hypocrisy of the left, and I cannot stand it.